The following video was sponsored by the Greek American Heritage Society of Philadelphia, preserving and promoting our community's history. My name is uh, George Jordis. Uh, we've had the orchestra years ago with uh, approximately five or six members. Uh, Frank Marmoreau was very instrumental with getting started in the in the music uh, field. And uh, we had Andrew Habroff, Alex, and Jack Zarzation, Tony or Anthony Marmoreau. Well, tell me a little bit about the band. How did you guys get together? How did it form? Well, Frankie and I were discharged from the Army, and uh, we sat down one day and just because of Frankie, mostly, uh, who uh, prompted me to say, look, you've been in the Army band, you've You've had this experience playing here and there, uh, overseas, and let's start a Greek band. And at first I, I thought it was impossible, but one job led to another, and after that we started rolling and never stopped for approximately 40 years later. Tell me the name of the band and how did you guys start that name and everything? Uh, the name of the band was we just George Jordis uh, Orchestra, and uh, we traveled uh, locally. Most of our uh, engagements, most of our engagements were local, but we uh, did travel uh, to. Uh, Upstate New York, down south, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, and it, it was really an experience for all of us. How long did you folks play together? We were together for approximately 35 or 40 years. Our, one of our last engagements I still remember very vividly was uh, Father Spiro Papadimitriou's retirement dinner. He was from Reading, and we played that job up in Reading at the uh, one of the clubs that were owned by a Greek family. Well, what was it like to actually play uh, for all these years for you? What did you get out of it? What did it do for you? We. Oh, the, the greatest experience was, of course, the, uh, the, the, the Greek music. That's, that's what really stirred us. And that's, uh, I, I loved the, the, the music and I started writing it uh, when I would listen to uh, recordings at first and then tapes and, and that's what kept us going. The, the music that was coming from Greece and that we, we love to hear and listen and dance to. Tell us a little bit about your early life. Uh, how did you get into um, your musical background? The, my musical background goes back to my uh, grandfather who, who uh, came to the United States from Greece uh, in approximately the early 1900s. And he, he was a clarinetist in Greece and he had his own little group there, and then so many people left Greece and they came over here, and he, he worked, as a matter of fact, on the railroads here in the United States. And he got as far as Chicago and California, 
And when he was working for the railroads, he would be playing <laughs> all the weekends and the what have you here and there. I only met him after I was drafted and went to Greece, and I, that's where I met him, and he told me some of these tales and some of these stories so vividly that he never forgot. Well, tell us a little bit about the instrument you played and how you got started with that. Well, I, I played the, the saxophone in school. We took lessons here with my cousins, Strat Marmoreau and Tony Marmoreau at Wurlitzer's. And uh, that was when we were teenagers and we would uh, rent an instrument and as you were renting it for a dollar or so, you would be paying part of that to buy the instrument and pay for the lesson at Wurlitzer's at 10th and Chestnut, if I recall, that's where it was at. And uh, from there, uh, I got interested in the bouzouki uh, later, and I started actually playing on a mandolin, and after the mandolin, I, I went on to the bouzouki, and uh, taught myself the bouzouki and uh, started singing Greek as I played the, uh, the instrument. And that, oh, and I also played the, uh, the clarinet and the flute when we had the large orchestra. I also had a 16-piece a orchestra playing at the Sheraton on the JFK Boulevard. I'm not familiar with that history. 16-piece orchestra? Yes, yes, we well, had. Tell us a little bit about and that. that I, I had, the, uh, I had uh, 16 members that were uh, local gentlemen from the area. There were five, four or five saxophones, three or four brass trumpets and uh, trombones piano player, bass, uh, which my cousin Tony Marmoreau played bass, and Frankie played the drums. And Frankie and I were always together with the music uh, that was uh, many, many, uh, many Greek uh, artists appeared there at the Sheraton Hotel with us. Uh, Mary Linda and her husband. Even uh, today you're popular uh, amongst the next generation. People know your name throughout time. What made your band so special? I, I, don't, I don't know exactly how to answer that. Uh, I, uh, I guess it was we became popular and uh, because of the variety of, of the music that we were able to uh, give the, 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 the people here that loved both the Greek and, and the American music. So how long did you play all together, would you say? We played, uh, we covered uh, approximately 35 or 40 years of music here in the mostly the Philadelphia area how and it, suburbs. How did it come, I don't want to say to an end, but where did it, what road did it lead you to? An eventual retirement from the music scene? Everybody just kind of moved on? What happened in the end? We uh, got a little older, uh, uh, health reasons and what have you from uh, the different members of the orchestra times were changing we had disc jockeys uh, and we had uh, which my uh, grandson is now a disc jockey also <laughs> <laughs> do you ever pick up uh, the bouzouki and play it a little bit or talk to just the piano they 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 they, they, they played the uh, piano my granddaughter and my uh, my uh, grandsons 
what do they think of it when they have you shared your story with them? Do they know your past, your musical? Oh, well, they they definitely know my past. They have my album, and, and uh, they they encounter people where they go uh, whenever they're in the uh, whenever in their various churches that they attend the Greek churches that uh, oh your father played at my wedding or your father played at the the uh, affair at the Sheraton Hotel or your father played down in Wilmington or Reading, Pennsylvania and they meet people over down the down the seashore, down in Wildwood and Atlantic City at the casinos. What do the kids say when they hear this about you? Do they have conversations with you or ask you updated questions about your past? Or? Well, we always talk about it. We're we're always talking about it with my grandchildren as far as the uh, the various places that we we covered so far and near. Before me, I have a contract that you created, I believe it's from the 60s. I'd like you to just take a look at that and tell me what you think and if you remember it. <laughs> oh, I certainly do. And that's my writing. <laughs> it was for some kind of a ship boat cruise night <clears throat> and Billy Angelus from St. Demetrius was involved. Oh, the showboat cruise, <clears throat> yes. That was a ship on the Delaware River that uh, we played on back in 1967. <laughs> My God, and I, I lived uh, at 66, 33 Jackson Street then. <laughs> Did you notice wow. the price, the fee that you guys charged to play back then? $185, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, and that that was for five musicians. <laughs> <laughs> Takes you back, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> my my, that is something. Wow. Can you talk a little bit about your wife and the fact that you um, wrote a song about her? Maybe I I wrote I wrote one of the selections that that is actually my wife's name, Chris Avier. Uh, it's a tzamiko that everybody loved to dance to at, at just about every affair we played at. It was uh, a very, very moving and uh, everybody would get up from their chairs and start it and then tables and started dancing the tzamiko to that uh, selection that I wrote for my uh, wife, Chris Avi. We know who you wrote it for, your wife. What was, was there an inspirational moment for it? Uh, the, the inspirational moment for my writing that was that my wife uh, really helped uh, to steer me playing music and, uh, and uh, that is Greek music. My wife was born in Greece, but she came here as a teenager. But uh, uh, she, was, she was just a great influence to me. Did you write any other music? Um, no, the, the, other, the only music that I would write is actually uh, the Greek selections that I uh, performed uh, at the engagements we played at that I that I would write from listening to the recordings and tapes uh, that in that in that uh, sense. Did you have like a program that you would set up ahead of time and say, "Well, we're going to do this"? There was today. no, there was no, no. There there was a little uh, preparation, but most of it was most of the uh, uh, evening would consist of. Uh, requests from the audience and and whatever we were able to uh, uh, offer as far as whatever was popular in Greece and in the United States at that time. Your your military history, if we can just talk about that for a minute or two, just so I... I, I, was, uh, I was drafted in uh, December of uh, 1952, right before Christmas, and... Uh, 
I took basic training down at Fort Meade, then uh, Camp Camel, Kentucky, and then down in uh, North Carolina at Fort Bragg. From Fort Bragg, uh, I was told I was going to Germany. And uh, when I arrived in Germany, uh, this was during the Korean conflict. Uh, shortly after that, the, the Korean conflict uh, ended and uh, we were sent to uh, France. And in France, I was with a, a, a medical group there that was uh, returning back to the United States. And uh, I still had service time to complete. And there were auditions uh, for the 279th Army Band that were made available that I read on the bulletin board in the orderly room where I was at. And I said, uh, Here's a, an opportunity I'm going to try and... So I took the audition with the 279th uh, military band and I was accepted and I served uh, for uh, approximately 16 months in France with the 279th Army Band. And we played all over France, and uh, we uh, also went close to the uh, Spanish uh, border there, and playing uh, in the marching band and the uh, and the uh, dance band. And uh, in December of 1954, I was uh, designated to return back to the United States. And we took, uh, we, we were loaded onto a ship and, in uh, Germany and came back to uh, Staten Island and I was discharged from uh, from uh, Fort uh, Fort Dix. What did you get out of that? I think it was Fort Dix. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get out of that time frame in the military? What did that do for you? How did it change you? Well, I I, I thought it was uh, a great learning period for me, both uh, musically and uh, in my. Uh, association with all the different people that I had met in my in my musical career in the army band and serving in the United States Army. Let's just talk um, one or two closers here because I don't know your background growing up. Where, where were you born and raised? I was I was born and raised in Philadelphia down at uh, I was born in the uh, woman's hospital at 2nd and Diamond Street, next door to St. Boniface Church. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, my mother would take us there as uh, children to the doctor right there at the, uh, at the park, at the Diamond Street Park there. And uh, we grew up, I was baptized in St. George's Cathedral, and we attended church there for a few years, and then we went to uh, Evangelismos on 12th, on 12th and Fitzwater, which I attended. And I also sang in the choir for approximately three years. Your middle school, high school years, you, I, were, you were in the same area? Is that what you Yes. Uh, 
we were in North Philadelphia. From North Philadelphia, well, we went to McKinley School. And uh, f from there, we went to Cook Junior High School up near Broad Street. And uh, from there, we went to Massbaum where we studied uh, music. Uh, that is, my cousin Strat and I went there and we studied music. We had music theory, writing, composition, uh, solfege. And uh, I guess that's what really got us started in the, the love of, uh, of music. Any final thoughts or um, maybe something you'd like to share with the community? A thank you to your well, I just, uh, I, I would just like to uh, uh, thank them for all the beautiful memories that the Philadelphia people shared with me in, in my career as a musician, as, as, a, as an individual, as, as, a, as, a, as a youngster and growing up, and here we are in our <laughs> octogenarian years. <laughs> I just want to thank everyone so very, very much and uh, express my love for everyone that I uh, ever encountered in my, in my musical career and otherwise. Thanks for talking with us. Good luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. For more information about sponsoring, or viewing the interview series, visit the Greek American Heritage Society of Philadelphia online at gahsp.org.